What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video we're going to learn how to massively speed up Python code using Cython. So let us get right into it. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up a command line and we're going to install Cython by saying pip install Cython, like that. It's written like Python with a C in the beginning. And it is a library and a module, but it is also a programming language, or you could say an extension of the Python programming language. So it basically takes Python and adds statically type variables, for example, to the Python language. And by using these C-like principles, we can speed up the Python code massively because Python makes a lot of things easy for us. We can, for example, just say A equals 10 without specifying any data type. And then we can say print... Uh, print type a for example, and we're going to see okay, it's an integer But then again, I can go ahead and say uh, a equals hello world And then it's a string and in Python you can do things like that And because of that you only know what data type a certain variable is during runtime You cannot know in advance now Of course we have talked about type hinting and we know that type hinting is possible and type hinting allows developers to get rid of the uncertainty if you use tools like mypy but it doesn't make things faster because it just it, it just makes the whole thing a little bit more stable and more predictable for the developers, but it doesn't actually speed up the code because you're not changing anything in the inner functionings of the Python language. Whereas with Cython, you can actually do static typing, which is not possible with type hinting. And in today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to write a simple function that is going to find some prime numbers. So we're going to have uh, a function signature like that. We're going to have um, I don't know, find primes and we're going to have amount and what we're going to expect as a return value is a list of the first uh, x or in this case, the first amount uh, prime numbers. And we're going to do this in vanilla Python. And then we're also going to do this in Cython and we're going to see the difference in execution time. All right, so let's get started with the implementation of the vanilla Python version, we're going to say def and we're going to call this, I don't know, prime finder vanilla. And we're going to pass an amount here. And we're going to say the list of the prime numbers that we already found is going to be empty in the beginning. We're going to say we found zero prime numbers and the number that we're going to check first is going to be two. And then we're going to say while the amount of found numbers is less than the amount that we demand, we're going to say four x in the primes that we already found. Because the only thing that we need to check for is if the new number that we're checking is divisible by the primes, because if it's divisible by any other number, it's going to also be divisible by the primes. So this is just mathematics here. Uh, we're going to say if the number that we are currently checking is divisible by any of the prime numbers. So if the division results in the remainder of zero, then we're going to say this is not a prime number because it's divisible by something. Um, otherwise, if that is not the case, you can just append an else here to the four, which basically means that if uh, if we don't break out of this for loop, we're going to go into this else branch here. And we're going to say if that is not the case, primes append. And we're going to append this number because there was not a single number below it, not a single prime number below it, that is able to divide it. So it is a prime number. And we can say found plus equals one. And what we're going to do uh, every time is we're going to increase the number in order to progress to the next number. So number plus equals two. And in the end, we're just going to return to prime. So a very simple function. This is the vanilla version in Python. Uh, now we're going to write the same thing using um, using the Cython syntax. Now we're going to get some probably some errors while coding because it's not going to recognize the syntax. So don't be confused by that. But we're going to call this prime finder um, optimized because Cython actually allows us to uh, or allows itself to optimize code. So here we're going to also pass amount. But here we start with the first thing we're going to say int amount in order to signal that this is going to be an integer. Again, we're going to get this error here, but don't mind it. We're just going to continue coding here because this is Cython syntax. Later on, we're going to rename this to main.pyx because that is the file type that we're going to code in. But I think if I do it right now, we're going to get no sy syntax highlighting at all. So we're actually 
No, actually, we get syntax highlighting. We just don't get it here. Okay, uh, doesn't really matter. So we're going to do it like that. Then we say cdef, which is a Cython keyword for C definition, int number. So we're going to do the same thing that we did up here, we're going to define a number. Um, and we're also going to define this x control variable. And we're also going to already define the found here uh, as an integer because we don't want to define them on the fly. And we're also going to define the empty prime number list. But here, since we're using uh, C like programming style, we need to already say, okay, how large is this array going to be, we cannot just say, okay, make it larger by appending elements. No, we need to say, okay, this is a fixed size thing. So we're going to say, int primes. And let's just pick an arbitrary limit of 100,000, for example. So this is five zeros. There you go. And then we're just going to say, okay, in case I choose an amount that is above that number, we're just going to take the minimum of either the amount or 100,000. So if we choose something that's above 100,000, we're just going to default to 100,000. So you can change that, of course, if you want to. What we're going to do then is we're going to say found equals zero again. And we're going to say number equals two as we did before. And after that, we're going to say while found is less than amount, we are going to say four x in primes here, we need to do it a little bit differently, because we're not just saying four x in primes. Uh, or actually, we are saying the same thing, but we don't want to go through all the primes because primes is uh, or has 100,000 elements. And we don't want to go through all the zeros, because then we're going to get the division by zero. So all we need to do is we need to go up until the index of found, which basically means that if you found zero, you're just going to do nothing. Uh, so you're not even going to take the first number because up until zero means not including zero. Um, and if you have one, you're just going to look at that one. So this is what we need to do here. And if we do the same thing, if the number divisible by or if the number is divisible by x, then we're going to break because that is obviously a prime number. Otherwise, we're going to say primes on that particular index. So on the next uh, free space is going to be that number, just need to indent this here. And found is going to be plus equals one. So we're going to increment it. Let me just see here if I'm not blocking anything. No, seems good. I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller here. Um, there you go. So found plus equals one. And also number plus equals one. So one thing we need to do differently here. Also, we need to say return list is going to be a P for example, for P and primes up until found so that we only have the elements that we need. And we're going to return that list as a return list. So as you can see, the whole logic of how we f uh, find the prime numbers is the exact same, we're not changing anything. So it's not more efficient here, we actually have more code here. So we have a fixed size array with unnecessarily many free slots, if we don't need them, we have type definitions, we have all this extra code here like that. So actually, if anything, this is going to be slower, if, if it's just for the amount of code. So it's not a more efficient algorithm. But we're going to see that this thing here, this function is going to be way faster than this vanilla function up here. Alright, so now we have all this code, but we cannot just go ahead and call the functions down here and measure the differences in execution time. What we need to do is we need to compile the whole thing because we have these uh, C like concepts here that we first need to translate into C code. And then we're going to end up with a binary file. So what we need to do here is we need to create a setup.py file. So we're going to uh, to open up a new Python file setup.py. And for this, we're going to I think also need the terminal and we need to say pip or actually, I think this is part of core Python. I think it's part of core Python. But if not, we need to say pip install setup tools. But I think it's part of uh, core Python. So you don't need to do anything probably. Uh, but what we definitely need to do is we need to import from setup tools. We're going to just import setup. And we're going to also import from Cython dot built, we're going to import Cythonize. This is the function that we're going to use. And the only thing that we need to do here is we need to say setup equals 
And in here we say ext modules equals Cythonize main dot pyx. That is all we need. Uh, why is this? Oh, sorry, we don't say equals, we just call setup. That is how it works. And we don't just run this, but we have to type in a terminal command. So we navigate to the directory where the setup file is. And then we say Python or Python 3 setup.py build ext or build underline ext or ext minus minus in place like that. And that's going to build this into a binary file. And what we're going to do after that is we're going to have a second script, an ordinary Python script, nothing with Cython. Uh, we're just going to call this test.py. And as you can see, first of all, we have this thing here, which is the actual, um, the actual compiled binary, but we also have a C code. So we, we also have a C file here, a C script or a C program, a C source file, you could say. Uh, but you can see it's full of preprocessor directives, so you don't need you don't really need to understand what's happening here. Uh, also, don't think that C is always that complicated. This is just a Python uh, translation, so it's a little bit, uh, yeah, more extensive. I don't really know what's happening here. But this is the optimized C code, and then we also get this. Now we actually don't need this source file anymore. We only need that, and we can use it by just saying. Let me just see the syntax. I think we only need to say import uh, main, or depending on what you called your script in the first place, you just need to use this name here. So import main in my case, and we're also going to import time to measure the differences. And now we can just go ahead and say main dot and we can call the function. So in this case, we had prime finder vanilla, like that. And we can, for example, say we want 40 primes, and then we can say print the result, which is the list. And let's see if this works. So as you can see, we got 40 primes. Now let me just see if this works if I rename this. So let's just call this something else like that. So it's no, no longer called main. So we're definitely not uh, importing this. And if I now run this, you can see it still works. Now the important part is now to figure out if it's faster, uh, if the Cython optimization is faster than the prime vanilla finder. And for this, we're going to first of all say start vanilla equals time dot time. We're going to copy that into end vanilla. And we're going to print end vanilla minus start vanilla like that. So first of all, we can just run this and see that it works. 40 is of course nothing. Let's change this to 4000, for example. And you're going to see that it takes a little bit longer, but still not very long, even with vanilla. Um, but we're going to increase the number in a second here. So first of all, let's do the same thing. Let's just copy that and do the same thing for the optimized version. So I'm going to call the start C and NC. And we're going to call not vanilla, but optimized like that. And we're going to also copy this year. C and C like that. So if we now run this, you're going to see that this takes half a second. And this takes 0.04 seconds. Now I might say that's not really important. But let's change the numbers to let's say I don't know 10,000. 10,000 is not, uh, not, not a small number when it comes to finding all the primes. And as you can see, it takes quite long to get a result, it took like three seconds, 3.18 seconds to get a result from the vanilla function. And it took like a third of a second, not even a third of a second from the optimized function. And you know, we can increase the numbers here as we go on, we can say, for example, 20,000. And this is going to take quite some time, I think this is going to take like 12 seconds for the vanilla version. Um, but we're going to see that it still gives us the result. And then we're going to see that this is way faster. Now it's still going to take like 1.2 seconds or something like usually a 10th of the time that it took this function, this is going to be the execution time of this function. Um, but as you can see, like this 
needed 12.89 seconds and here we just needed 1.12 seconds for the exact same result. Um, and this is not going to really change if we do, for example, 30,000 here, I'm not going to do it here. So I'm going to comment that out. But this is not going to take too long. For the optimized version, it's, it took like 2.6 seconds. If we did this uh, with uh, up here with 30,000, we would probably take like 28 seconds or something. And as you can see, this is just because we have static typing, we didn't do a lot of magic there, we didn't change any algorithmic uh, complexity things. We didn't all of a sudden cache something because caching, I did a video on speeding up your code using caching. This works sometimes if you have recursive function calls and so on, but it only works in some situations. And this didn't even use any caches or anything special. We just optimized the code with static typing. We sacrificed some of the Python flexibility for a massive improvement in uh, execution time and speed and performance. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.